Hi there. Today we're going to share the games that we have for Daphne to play. She is blind and is very motivated by smell and taste. And she doesn't actually play with traditional dog toys. She doesn't play with balls or stuffies. Don't know why. I adopted her when she was four, so it might have something to do with her history. I don't know. But she does enjoy these games. And so they are good for any dog because they involve sniffing and being rewarded with treats. Daphne likes them especially because sniffing is how she gets around, how she navigates the world, and taste is her very favorite sense. games for me to put together is this Not a Rock by Roughwear, and this was one of the first toys that I got for Daphne that uh, drops treats for her. I should say that nothing that I'm sharing with you today, none of the products are sponsored in any way. These are just things that we actually use and really enjoy. So, first of all, we start with Daphne's favorite treats. Actually, these are the only treats that I give Daphne. Uh, she doesn't have any teeth, so treats are a bit of a challenge um, to find something that she likes and that she can chew and that I'm comfortable giving her. So the ingredients on these are very good. Uh, this is the bacon treats, and it just has ground pork, pork heart, pork liver, and pork kidney and a few other small ingredients, all of which I am able to recognize what they are. So that makes me feel good about giving them to her. So I always start with five packages and most of them go into a jar and into the fridge to keep them fresh. And I'm just gonna put that little packet in there and sometimes they stick together so I take them apart and drop them in. So although I cut the package open, I just do that to make it easy, but they are resealable, so you don't have to do that. But I access these very frequently, and so I like to have them easily accessible, and I put them all in the jar and in the fridge. The fridge helps to keep them fresh, and fresh means soft, and soft means chewable for that without her teeth. Speaking of Daphne being toothless, she had to have all of her teeth removed to prepare her for adoption. They were all infected, so clearly she wasn't getting the best care prior to being adopted. So next what I do is I cut these into small pieces. So I think my jar holds about 16, so I count those out. Three, six, nine, twelve. 15. And so I have bacon flavor and beef flavor. I'm just mixing them together. It doesn't matter. She likes them equally. Same. And then I have a glass and this is a sink strainer. I like it because it's got different size holes so that any crumbs that fall when I'm cutting these just fall through the holes of the strainer. And those crumbs are very valuable, I will explain. So I shake those about, capturing the crumbs. And then I have a little gum container that I pour these in. And when this is full with 15, 16 or so sticks all cut up, that will last probably three days in the fridge with the amount of games that Daphne plays and that sort of thing during the day. So when this is full, it goes in the fridge. When I'm finished cutting these all up, I capture all of the crumbs. I don't know how well you can see that. Usually there's more, obviously, when I've cut more. And I put them in a little container and this becomes sprinkles that 
that go on Daphne's suit. And that might seem a little excessive, only because it is, but sometimes Daphne is a bit fussy. Even if she absolutely loved and devoured a meal yesterday, today she might not want to eat it. And so if I add some sprinkles, then it's more appealing to her and she's more likely to devour it once again. And so, for the games, once I have this full, I put a handful, which usually amounts to about two sticks cut up. And this bowl, for example, I just pour these in and then she will smell the treats, find the ball, and roll it around and treats will fall out and she will be rewarded. Let's give her this right now. Hey Daphne. Hey Daphne. Here you go. So other games that involve the treats, there is this ball that has the little hole in it. Uh, and the ring around, so it just rolls a little bit differently, but the ring helps it to not roll away on poor Daphne. Uh, she wouldn't know where it is. This ball that I got when I first adopted Daphne, and it, it's just a baby's ball actually, and it makes a sound. I thought that this would be good for Daphne to be able to locate the ball after it rolled. She had no interest in this ball. Now it is a ball that we do a game for, uh, use for a game. So here's what we do. I have eight bar mop cloths and I put two or three on each cloth like that. And then I fold them over and roll them up and stick them in one of these large holes. Now, there are balls made for dogs that are similar to this that have the big holes. So you can use one of those this way because this isn't something you would normally find at a pet store. Uh, so we roll these up and stuff them all into there and then she rolls these around, uses her paws to pull the cloths out and has to unroll the cloths in order to get the treats. What else do we have? We have an egg carton with just some dollar store balls in each compartment. And what I do is I put one or two treats in each compartment and then I set this down for her. And of course her challenge is to get the lid open and get the balls out to get each of the treats. I just use an old tea towel. It's over here. So I just use an old tea towel and I sprinkle treats around like that, usually more than this. And I just fold it in a way that the treats kind of get tucked in, twist it around, tie it in a knot, and then Daphne gets to untie that and get rewarded with her treats. So this snuffle ball is one of those balls with the holes in it, like I was describing with this ball. It's got felt tied around each of the holes and so it provides just a little different challenge in getting the treats to drop out and be able to find them. Oh, there's one more. I'll be right back. These are
are little plastic eggs that you find at Easter time. And they open up and they have teeny tiny holes at the bottom that the scent from the treats can emit through. And so I can put one, two, three treats in there and can toss a bunch of those around on the grass, through the room, whatever. And then when she finds one that does have treats in it, so the idea is to put treats only in some of them, then I will open the egg and drop the treats out for her and she gets that reward. So this one does involve me actually being right there as she plays. And so it's not as good for keeping her entertained while I have other things to do. But she enjoys that and it's an especially big challenge for her. But she's good at it. So the idea around these games all started when I took Daphne to nose work classes. And in the class, they put cardboard boxes all around the room and put treats in only some of the boxes. And then the challenge is to find which boxes have the treats. And sometimes we still get the boxes out and put them around the room, boxes, um, disposable cups, um, paper towel rolls, anything, any kind of random objects are good to just scatter around the room and have her find the treats among the different scents of the objects. I hope this gives you some ideas about how to have your dog challenged and entertained with treats and games that they would enjoy. What's the matter, Daphne? Your ball is empty? All finished?